everybody. Welcome to today's episode of the Meet the Agent podcast. My name is Alan Perez. I'm your host. And joining me today is Tyler Moore, expert agent out of Las Vegas, uh, working primarily in Clark County and the surrounding areas. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. I'd actually like to go ahead and throw it over to you. Could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Let us a little bit, let us know a little bit about how you got into the real estate business. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so um, my name is uh, Tyler. Tyler Moore, no, not to be confused with Mary Tyler Moore, for those that would get that. Um, and, and or I go by Tyler G. Moore, Tyler Garrison Moore. Um, I made sure I put that on, all down on my licenses so that way I could, you know, if I wanted to be lazy and 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 uh, exit the G, et cetera, and not put the Mary, not joking. Um, so yeah, so real estate, it's uh, it's been a fun ride. You know, I, I became a real estate agent during COVID. So I had to take my test out in California and then drive the four hours out there to do that. And, you know, COVID kind of happened when we did do the, um, the testing and, and uh, the class and et cetera. So it was, it was on the cusp of that. So it was very interesting. And uh, to give you a little background on myself, um, I had been a law enforcement officer for 23 years prior to starting my career as a, um, a realtor. So um, I don't like to say retired. I like to say I, I transitioned from law enforcement to protecting people's rights and doing the right thing to um, same thing with being realtors. It's very similar, um, protecting my clients' rights. Um, and we'll kind of get into this about like, you know, how I kind of brand myself, but um you know, it's, it's really similar to law enforcement. You know, you, you basically go out there and you have people that want something or that need something and you, they're the clients and you protect their rights and you make sure that you work them through the whole process to make sure that everything's good to go. So I think it's, it's not, it wasn't a hard transition from law enforcement to that. And I also, um, on the part-time side, I was also um, teaching self-defense to law enforcement officers and also to civilians and um, the public. And I thought that was a lot of, you know, if I could sell that, that was like selling life insurance. I figured if I could sell um, basically self-defense to people that selling houses would be easy, <laughs> easier, let's say that, because uh, no one thinks about self-defense, but they always think about, you know, housing and and uh, we'll, I think we'll talk more about um, Maslow hierarchy of needs, et cetera. But uh, I don't know, this is, I'm, I'm excited to be on the show today and I really appreciate this. So. Of course. And thank you so much for setting aside this time to connect with us. We're very excited to speak with you. Uh, something that I'd love to be able to get your insight on and actually have you share a little bit more on. You just mentioned Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Could you go ahead and actually introduce the concept for us and elaborate on how that helped you decide on real estate to begin with? Yeah, um, so I think the big thing with Maslow hierarchy of needs, obviously there's self-actuation at the top, but below that, you have several base layers. You know, there's the physiology type stuff like, you know, breathing air, oxygen, water, et cetera, food. But, um, you know, just above that you have safety and safety actually comes down to housing or shelter. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm just kind of ad-libbing a little bit about that and kind of giving my uh, opinion on Maslow hierarchy of needs, but housing and shelter are, are are some of the basic needs that we need before we get to the, the top level of, of Maslow hierarchy of needs. And that's why I, I kind of, you know, teaching self-defense before, and then now kind of being a realtor, you know, it's much easier to kind of give the benefit of, of having that shelter. And then like, we could also go into rentals versus buying, you know, that's a whole nother topic because, you know, unfortunately with the rental market and people being able to raise rents, sometimes it's better to actually own than to rent because, you know, you don't have that worry of, am I going to get this house sold underneath me or are they going to raise the rent again on me? So, you know, it has a lot to do with that. Actually, on that topic, could you go ahead and explain to us, give us a little bit of insight into how the rental market currently is operating out there in the Las, Ve Las Vegas area? Yeah, well, the rental, the rental market in Las Vegas 
is um, is pretty crazy. Oh, you know, I, I'm giving approximate numbers. I can't give exact numbers because everything's always changing. So, sixty percent of people in Las Vegas rent approximately. Sixty percent approximately are renters. So, and even in, in Nye County, if you go to Pahrumpt, Pahrumpt is another hot area for renting. Um, you know, it's hard to find rentals out there also. So, you know, the rental market's been, been crazy ever since, um, you know, COVID happened, et cetera, and just in general, and it's just getting more intense and, you know, people can raise the rates and it just, it's just a, it's a crazy market. So either way, you know, if you're trying to rent or you're trying to buy, it's, it's still, it's definitely a, it's a hot market for, for all of that. And I think the, the biggest issue is right now, the inventory that we're experiencing for, for the housing market here in Vegas is uh, the medium house price right now is late, last I checked was about 450, 450,000. And that's for a three bedroom, two, two bath, you know, basic, basic house. So obviously, you know, depending on where you are, that can change a little bit, but the, that's just the medium medium house price. Thanks for sharing that insight. It's definitely something to keep track of. I mean, we're seeing that the prices in a lot of the hot metropolitan areas across the U.S. are just jumping massively. Um, so obviously, we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, switching gears, so I actually wanted to get you to kind of loop back to what we were discussing previously. Um, when you had realized that you know, shelter uh, in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs is actually more, you know, important or a little bit more of a baseline uh, for for most people. Uh, how did you from then uh, jump into law enforcement or rather jump out of law enforcement and jump into the real estate industry? Could you share a little bit of insight on that? Yeah, so, you know, it's, I really didn't want to go back to law enforcement anymore. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about law Enforcement. I'm just saying that I moved from where I was on the East Coast all the way out here to Las Vegas. And I had been coming out here for training for, for multiple years. And I already knew I liked Las Vegas. And I had some definitely some, uh, some knowledge about the area. So after like 15 years of training out this way. So I think that it wasn't a hard transition, you know, from law enforcement to real estate. It's just learning some different things. I mean, obviously there's laws you have to learn, there's rules, there's paperwork. So, I mean, it's a lot, a lot like law enforcement, but, um, you know, just, um, and then just creating my own, uh, you know, sphere of influence out this way in Vegas, you know, you can pretty much drop me anywhere and I'll talk to anybody. So I think that was the, the big thing is just being able to be confident and competent about speaking to people and, and you know, find, and in fact, that's why I have a podcast called uh, What Makes You Tick? Because I like to find out what makes people tick and what makes them, you know, just like what, the, what, are, what are their likes, what are their dislikes? And I think that really helps me with my clients is kind of figuring out like, you know, what are you looking for? How, you know, when's your time frame, et cetera, et cetera. And just looking into that and just, and just, you know, attending to their needs as, as a client. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned that the fact that you podcast, um, in my understanding, especially from the agents that I've been able to speak with, a lot of the time, those agents that are most successful or primed to be successful are the ones that can take a genuine interest in their prospects, uh, wanting to see how they tick, uh, so to speak. Uh, actually, on that topic, could you elaborate and maybe shed some light? What, is, what are your thoughts and what is it that you believe uh, a real estate agent's responsibility is? What is it that you, uh, the value that you should be presenting for a client? Well, number one, answer your phone. <laughs> um, you got to answer your phone. You got to be available. You have to make yourself available. And even if you miss the call, call them back as soon as possible. Don't wait. You know, like, oh, okay, who is this person that called me? Did they leave a message? Um, you, you really have to be attentive and 
because if you're not answering that phone call, someone else will be, and it'll probably be me. Um, but I think really it comes down to just um, diversifying, you know, I, and I guess I kind of equate being a good real estate agent as kind of like gardening and, you know, being, or you're on a farm and you need to, you know, you, you're, you're trying to grow produce. There's no exact, there's, there is an exact science to it, but you kind of have to find out what works in your location and your soil and your area, right? So, you know, growing stuff in the desert, obviously not that easy. Um, but if we talk about a virtual growing, you know, you, you want to have the right seeds, you want to have the right location. Um, you know, is that over, uh, is that location overpicked or overgrown? And what do you have to do to, you know, to, to make it viable again? Or do you have to move on to a different location where maybe there's not as many real estate agents in that area or they haven't thought about that area? And doing the stuff that no one else wants to do or no one else thinks about is the way really to kind of do, to, to, to really to cultivate that, no pun intended. But, you know, beside having the right seeds and, and the right, right soil, you, you need to attend your crops. We really don't know how much we're going to produce out of that crop until the end, until it actually sprouts and something's produced and that there's that fruit and there's that, um, that would be our clients. And obviously not only our clients, but also are we, are we making money? Are we, are we producing business? But I think that you need to make that repeatable and also learn from your mistakes is like, okay, this didn't work. How can I do this better the next time? And, and just write those results down of what you did to make those results happen. And then just keep on, keep on working, keep on weeding, keep on watering, keep on getting some sunlight for those, those plants and those seeds. And, and eventually things will grow and things will happen. So it's not, an easy process. In fact, I equate being a real estate agent to the song by Cypress Hill called Do You Want to Be a Rap Superstar? Uh, um, hopefully I said that right. Um, so definitely listen to that song if you are a real estate agent because no, being a real estate agent isn't easy. It takes a lot of work. That's an awesome analogy. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It really is uh, about nurturing, about finding the right crop so to speak, that you can tend and then be able to reap the rewards afterwards. I mean, on along those same lines, how long did it take for you or, you know, is it something that you're currently still working on to be able to figure out your preferred clients, basically the best prospects uh, and situations that you're able to assist with? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm always a work in progress. I think we all are as humans. <laughs> We're always trying to become better, strive to be better, strive to do more. Am I doing enough? It's like the big question I ask myself every morning. Am I doing enough? Am I, uh, not that I'm, I know I'm good enough, but is it, am I good enough? So um, you really have to be like, am I working hard enough towards my goals? And am I producing something? Or do I need to change gears? Because you need to be, you need to evolve with, uh, with, you need to evolve with real estate, I think, you know, as we get more into, especially with, with everything that's happened in the last couple of years, we're more now it's, it's less brick and mortar and we're more into the virtual world, right? I mean, we're having a meeting on Zoom and um, beside that, you know, can we, you know, is it, is Facebook the new thing or is it Instagram or is it, you know, TikTok and et cetera, et cetera? Like, you know, what do we, What's the new platform that we need to be on, and how do we how do we attract um, clients to show them what we can do for them? And that's the big thing. It's not like we're trying to, um, you know, grab clients or anything like that. We're trying to attract them to us to show them that we can add value um, to the transaction. That you know, and that's why I had a brand myself. Uh, again, you know, I branded myself when I was doing self-defense, but now teaching that, and now I find I have to brand myself with real estate and why, um, 
why my brand is better. And, you know, back in 1999, I went to um, the FBI, put on a hostage negotiation course locally. And it was a week long course, 40 hours. And I learned a lot about negotiations. And that's really what real estate is. It's about negotiating. And it's a team effort between, you know, the listing agent, the, um, the, you know, the, the buyer's agent, the title company, the, um, the lender, if there is a lender involved. And it's just, we're all just trying to win, win. We're all just trying to make sure everyone wins. Everyone goes away happy as they can be for that process. And that's the most important thing to me is that we all win in that, you know, cause if we all win, then we all go away and like, okay, that was a great experience. And that's, I think that's the mo most important thing is just a win-win. And um, also, so I, I call myself a real estate negotiator and options facilitator because I can't make anyone buy or sell, but I can give them options. And what they choose is up to them because, again, I can't tell someone what to do and I wouldn't, um, but I'm going to give them the best information possible so they can make an intelligent choice, intelligent decision on what they should do. So could you explain to us what your process when working with a prospect is like? Yeah, totally. Uh, um, so you know, we find out, first of all, what the client wants, you know, what their timeline is. And I think the other thing is most important is, you know, finding out like what they're like, again, what, what makes you tick, not to throw my podcast out there again, but that's really important though. And that's why I named it that is because we're finding out what makes our clients tick and what, the, like, what, what, what really sets them off for like what kind of house they or property they want. And you know, it comes down to um, the process is just understanding and, and knowing what their needs are, their wants, and be able to dial that in to find them a property that we, you know, that's going to work for them. And it may not be their dream home right away. Maybe, maybe down the road, it will be their dream home, you know, once they just own some property and can get some equity. And then also just um, staying with the process, giving them as most knowledge and just giving them all the information that we possibly can without overloading them and kind of figuring out, okay, well, what, how much information would overload them? So that way we can kind of dial it back. And, and um, I've actually even helped out clients that had no real computer skills. And I've actually like sat down with them to, to actually literally help them out for like an hour or two a night just so they could to get through the process that we needed to. So um, there's no there's no task too small or too big for me to to help out my clients and to really kind of get them through the, the the home buying process or the selling process. And you know to to really just inform them about what the possibilities are and and um, you know like here are the options here's what you could do. Here's what you, you know, here's what I would do. Here's my opinion. Um, I don't give them any kind of hard way to go because again, it's really up to them and making the, the, the most informed choice. Something that I find really interesting uh, that maybe you could share with us. Uh, how is it that you're able to in your process and especially when you're talking to starting to build relationships with prospects that may not necessarily have a lot of background information and insight, how do you make sure that you avoid overloading them? It is definitely possible to, you know, in my understanding, scare off a prospect uh, by making the, the process seem a little bit too daunting. So how do you avoid that? Well, being transparent, number one, you know, and knowing that I am there for the client and the client is uh, a VIP or a very important person, right? So that's the most in, uh, important thing really is that it's just to make sure that the client understands that I am there for them. You know, obviously we have our, our duties that we have as real estate agents, as realtors to make sure that all parties are treated fairly and, and correctly, but obviously my client comes first and 
you know, being transparent, being, you know, they can call me anytime and ask me any questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. I will be there to answer them and in the best way possible. And if they, if, if they're not understanding me, it's because it's probably my fault. And what I mean by that is that I need to figure out a way that they're going to understand that, um, whatever I have to tell them. So I'll have to reroute and kind of redo things and maybe re re explain things, but you find a way to kind of um, develop rapport and really kind of understand your client by, you know, asking them, asking them simple questions, open-ended questions, uh, not simple yes or no. And just kind of, you know, having just good conversation, just like kind of like what we're having now and just finding out more about your clients and what their, um, what their dreams are, what their, you know, what they like to do, uh, what they're looking for, and just really just giving them that information and kind of reading them. And like, um, that's why I like interpersonal things or even on Zoom, you can still read people, you know, versus just a phone call. It's nice to be on Zoom or nice to be in person because that way you can kind of see body language. It's like, okay, are they understanding what I'm saying or are they, you know, kind of distracted at this point? So it's really kind of great to talk to that person in person just because it's body language is, is, is a lot. So Tyler, wanted to get your take on this really quickly. Uh, do you believe in a one size fits all approach for real estate agents? Uh, do you work with every client? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it really com comes down to, you know, I may not be everyone's cup of tea, but maybe I'm someone's whiskey. <laughs> you know, and I think that's really kind of important to, you know, yes, I, I, I may not be able to work with everyone. I'm hoping I can. I'm hoping I can, um, you know, reach out. But I mean, again, I'm I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be offended if, if someone doesn't want to work with me, but I will definitely give them as much information and knowledge as I can to help them out in the future. Like I've had a few people that have really bad credit scores and I'm like, okay, well, it's going to take you a little longer to do that. So I stay in touch with them. I stay in flow and I really just kind of uh, help nurture them and you know, some people I just, I can't help you. Right. You know, and you got to understand that it's like, you can't help everyone, but I try to help as many people as I possibly can. Even if it's just, here's some advice on some credit, you know, here's some sources. I'm giving you options. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a credit repair specialist. That's not what I do. That's not my lane, but here are some, here's some basic stuff. Here are some experts in this field go seek them out, they can help you. And, you know, you can always bring a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And I do the best I can and I give them the information and that's all I can do, um, you know, cause they're just not ready yet. And, you know, if they wanna come back to me, that's great. But there's 20, 16,000 to 20,000 realtors here in Las Vegas. So, you know, there's, you could definitely find one very easily, but um, would I like, would I like to be a realtor? Yes, I would. But again, you know, if you, if you find, I, I think I'm pretty friendly and pretty easygoing. Um, I'm direct though. And I'm to the point, and I like to, um, you know, discuss business and be transparent, like I said, so, and give options. So again, that may not be for everybody, but I'm okay with that. Now, Tyler, we are running towards the end of our time here. Thank you so much for having joined us up until this point. Uh, do you have any last quick pieces of advice for any real estate agents that might not necessarily be experiencing the level of success that they're looking for in the real estate industry? Well, I don't want to tell them the cliche of like, oh, just keep working harder. It'll happen finally. Well, yeah, it will. But, you know, how hard you work will definitely determine how fast it will happen and what you're doing. And if, it, if you're if you're not doing something that you think is working, um, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Definitely spread that out and kind of figure out, you know, 
um, what is working. Like I said, the gardening, the whole gardening analogy, I think works the best. And, you know, just really kind of, you got to do what you can do. Um, not everyone's going to be able to do cold calling. Not everyone's going to be able to do door knocks, but find out what, what makes you, what, what you're good at and do it. And, um, you know, again, this business isn't easy and it's not for everyone, but that doesn't mean you can't do well in it. It just, um, you know, it takes time, dedication, hard work. And um, I know that's cliche, like I said, but it really, it really does take hard work and determination. You know, don't be a quitter. Um, in fact, uh, you know, in the, in the first five years of real estate, most uh, 85 to 90% approximately people fail. So, and then the first year, 80% of people, realtors fail uh, or they quit. So don't be a quitter, keep going, keep, keep working hard. The process will work and um, find out what works for you. Do you have any last parting tips or advice for any prospects that may be thinking about moving out into the Las Vegas, Nevada area? Yeah, I mean, definitely come on. There's so much stuff to do versus um, everyone thinks like, oh, it's just a strip. It's just uh, Vegas, you know, casinos and stuff like that. But there's so much stuff to do here in Clark County and Nye County um, and Las Vegas in general. Uh, there's hiking. There's we actually do have water. You know, there's a lake called Lake Mead and um, there's actually a couple lakes around. But it's not just that. It's just there's so many things to offer here if you're a foodie. If you, you know, you like nightlife, you like, you like, um, you like the outdoors. There's so many things to do. Um, even in the summertime, just make sure you hydrate, bring water. <laughs> um, you know, definitely come on out here and, and check out what uh, Las Vegas has to do. Um, and then for the realtors out there, I think, um, and just business people in general, look up uh, Colonel Boyd's, uh, um, Look up, look up Colonel Boyd and, and uh, look up that stuff. I think that would be kind of interesting, that OODA loop. And uh, if, if something's not working, change direction. Um, that's, a, that was a, that's a simple version of that. So definitely check that out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tyler, for having joined us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to speak with you and gain all the insights that you've been able to share. Uh, for our viewers and our listeners, uh, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this episode and want to see more content like this. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.